Hello. Welcome to this service of worship and praise from Messiah Lutheran Church in Mechanicsville, Virginia. My name is Pastor Ryan Radke, and I'm glad you're with us. Thank you for tuning in, tapping, clicking, however you got here. Glad that you're with us. Uh, as you can tell, I am not in the church sanctuary today. There were some scheduling complications, but that's okay, because the good news is you can worship God from anywhere. It doesn't have to be a church. Uh, it's where we like to be together, but while we're still in these strange pandemic quarantine times, a lot of us still need to be at home for safety of ourselves and others. And so we'll worship God from wherever we are, just like you probably are doing right now watching this video. Uh, this service is for uh, Sunday, October 18th. It is the 20th Sunday after Pentecost. Um, there's lots of announcements. I hope that you can get to the eblast bulletin either from your email or you can find it attached somewhere nearby on the church website youtube page facebook page wherever these church services are made um, if you have that bulletin you'll be able to read the announcements and see lots of information some resources at your disposal some events coming up and also that msef and mechanicsville is collecting items for thanksgiving bags you have until the end of the month to collect those. So if you get them in the sooner the better. I think they're distributing them at the end of the month. I believe that's correct. But uh, double check, call the office just in case I had that wrong. Um, we're going to begin with confession and forgiveness. Set that down. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin and the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in the freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. A gathering song is Give Thanks. We do not have Miss Debbie, our accompanist, uh, with us. She has a birthday celebration. I won't say whose, but wish them well. And uh, so I'll just sing them. You can sing along at home. We'll do our best together. Uh, our opening song is called Give Thanks. We'll just sing it through one time. Oh, that's right. I have a nifty little app on my phone. Looks like that. Works like a little pitch pipe. So I'm going to go... Let's try that again. There we go. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. You hear lots of songs about giving thanks today. Um, our main gospel reading today comes from uh, Jesus talking to some Pharisees who are trying to trick him and trap him about uh, who these coins belong to. Should we pay taxes to the emperor? So in that sense of what we give and to whom we give it, 
uh, wanted to have a theme of thankfulness and thanksgiving in our songs today. Uh, there's that. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. First reading today comes from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know, from the rising of the sun and from the west, that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. The word of the Lord. Second reading comes from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 1. To the church of the Thessalonians, and God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you, because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit, and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you become imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols, to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The Word of the Lord. Our Gospel reading today comes from Matthew chapter 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax and they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Have you heard about this whole coin shortage thing that's going on? Now, technically, 
it's not that there's a shortage of coins. There's plenty of coins. Problem is circulation. When the pandemic hit, lots of stores closed. That means less money being passed back and forth. There were also concerns about handling money of any kind and the germs that could get shared in the exchanging. Once upon a time, I was a bank teller, and I can attest to the fact that money gets gross and filthy. It's not pretty. So, touchless payments, paying with cards, online. Add to all of this that in the early stages of the pandemic, the Fed, you know, the ones who make the coins and hold the coins in reserve and send shipments of coins to banks, those guys, they cut back on workers to prevent the spread of the disease, like almost everybody did. So to recap, stores closed, people staying home and not spending money, people buying things online or with cards, and money is surprisingly yucky on the surface. People didn't want to use it, touch it. And less coins being circulated into the system from the government because there weren't as many people working there. All of that equals the coin shortage. On the surface, today's gospel lesson is about coins, money, taxes. But with malice in their hearts, after all the recent parable slams and confrontations with Jesus, their power and standing threatened by Jesus' authority and popularity, the Pharisees, backed by the chief priests and elders, sent a delegation to try and trap Jesus, damage his reputation, get him in trouble with the Roman authorities. Taxes were a big issue. Um, the Jewish people didn't want to pay them, didn't want to be under Roman rule. And tax collectors often took an extra portion for themselves, and they were vilified by the people. Taxes weren't popular. So the plan was, let's get Jesus on public record saying that he was against taxes. If you're against taxes, you're against Caesar. He thinks he's the Messiah. The Messiah is supposed to free Israel. Let's see if Jesus will put his money where his mouth is. That'll show him. So they butter him up with sarcastic compliments. You're so sincere, Jesus. You teach the word of God in accordance with truth. Let's lay the foundation to really tick off the Romans. You show deference to no one. You don't regard anyone with partiality. It sounds like a compliment. But really, it just means that they're mad that Jesus didn't show them deference and partiality. And then they lay the trap. What do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Either Jesus will say, no taxes to Rome, and get in trouble with the Romans, or he'll say, taxes, schmaxes, pay the piper, and lose his standing with the people. They think they have him neatly cornered. Not so much. Jesus slips right through. Whose face is on that denarius? Caesar's? Fine. Give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and give to God the things that are God's. Mic drop. Like I said, on the surface, today's gospel reading is about coins, money, and taxes. But go just a little deeper, and it's about a whole lot more. It's about politics, power, honor, and maneuvering. It's about malice and entrapment. It's a duel. And their trap is no match for Jesus, who takes it even deeper, to the shame of the would-be entrappers. Give the emperor what is the emperor's, give to God the things that are God's. And really, it's the point that Jesus has been making through all these parables we've been hearing over the last few weeks. The spiritual leaders of Israel had gotten too wrapped up in the leader part and neglected the spiritual part. Jesus turns the trap back on them. It's about their relationship with God. Are they giving to God the things that are God's? Are we? What does it mean to give to God the things that are God's? What things belong to God? I mean, I guess I could just say everything. That doesn't really give us much direction, does it? Let's use Jesus' example. Whose face is on that coin? The emperor, Caesar. Someone who wanted to be worshipped like a god. Someone who wanted control over your life and your full allegiance. But God is above and beyond all countries, all rulers, all earthly allegiances. So Jesus says, pay your taxes. 
participate in the government, be a citizen, but give to God what is God's. Because whatever country you live in, whatever type of government you have, whatever flag is on the polls, whatever political party has a majority, whoever is currently in charge, Jesus is Lord. God is God. Give to God what is God's. Caesar's face, Caesar's slogan, that's what was imprinted on the coins. Constant reminder of who was in charge. But God is imprinted on you. God created human beings. We were created in the image of God, all of us, every woman, man, child, no matter the country, no matter the government, no matter the flag, no matter the party, no matter the anything. Every single ever loving person on this planet, past, present, and future, is created in the image of God. God has written on our hearts. God knew us before we were born. God knows every hair on our heads. God knows our prayers even when we don't have the words for them. God has called us by name. Caesar's face on the coin, God's imprinted on us. God, God imprinted on us. What belongs to God? You do. I do. They do. We do. People do. Created in the image of God, called good, called very good, loved so much that Jesus died for them, for us. That's what belongs to God. And us Christians, we have extra imprinting, sealed, even stamped with the cross of Christ at our baptisms, mm -hmm. named and claimed by God. We are God's currency in this world. And I hate to say it, there's a coin shortage where Christians are concerned, too. I'll never be partisan with you all. I'll never tell you who to vote for. But Christianity is political. Jesus was political. Gets into it today, not for the first time. Politics means people-related. And God's word was made flesh in Jesus the Christ. Jesus was a person, for God's sake, for our salvation. So it's an election year. And like other election years, politicians are trying to entrap one another with ads and debates and all the rest, trying to, if not entrap, entice voters their way. And it gets ugly. It gets messy. That's what Jesus took on. All of our ugly, all of our messy, the worst parts of people. And Jesus redeems us, all of us who belong to God, all of us who God wants to circulate in the world, all of us who are imprinted on by God, with God, to be spent in this world and to exchange ugliness for love. I'm not seeing a lot of love. I think there's a coin shortage. Mostly what I see is hostility and polarization, name calling, personal attacks. I've even heard it in the church parking lot. I haven't even been here this long. Just little snide remarks, little digs, little dehumanizations. I do it too, in my head, out loud with the folks who think like me. It's not about the issues or the policies all the time. We attack the person. We attack the other image bearers. The way they look, the way they talk, their families. Our discourse is not civil. We mock, we disparage, we tear down. Ugliness. I'm not talking about political correctness, or at least what that term has come often to mean for some. I'm talking about the golden rule. I'm talking about giving to God what is God's. I'm talking about recognizing the image of God in others, and in, for that matter, in ourselves. We're supposed to be imitators of God, imprinted with the cross of Christ. And the example we set, the coinage that we put out into circulation in the world, is teaching others about God through ourselves. Think about your least favorite politician. They belong to God. So do you. Think about your political opponents. They belong to God. So do you. I think we've forgotten about that. I think those of us who have been stamped 
with the image of God. Us Christian coins. I forgot. There's a coin shortage. Christians should be the ones who never forget that we are all created in the image of God, all valuable, all of worth, all imprinted with God's love. I'm not seeing a lot of that in circulation. This is a stewardship issue, believe it or not. A lot of times folks think that stewardship is just about your coins, your money. But stewardship isn't just the financial slice of the pie that is your life. It's the pie plate. It undergirds everything. Your monetary contributions, sure, but also your contributions to the world. Your degree of imitation of God. Your exchange rate of ugliness to love in the world. Your whole self. So just like Jesus, I'm getting political today by reminding you to be good stewards of the image of God that has been imprinted on you and on every single other human being. Your words matter. Your actions matter. Politics is not no holds bar international waters where you do whatever you want. You're imprinted by God. Give to the emperor what is the emperor's. Vote how you're going to vote, but let your faith and your Lord guide your politics. Let God's love guide you. Give to God what is God's and put yourself, along with all the love of God that has been stamped onto you, into circulation in the world. Put an end to the corn coin shortage for the love of God. Go be spent. Amen. Hem of the day is, we give thee but thine own. Get my little keyboard out. Let's try that again. There we go. We give thee but thine own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone. I trust, O oh Lord, from thee. May we thy bounties thus, as stewards true receive, and gladly as thou blessest us, to thee our first fruits give. The captive to release, to God the lost to bring, to teach the way of life and peace, it is a Christ-like thing. And we believe thy word, though dim our faith may be. Whate'er we do for thine, O Lord, we do it unto thee. I invite you to share with me and the expressing and confessing of our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in a time of prayer. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious God, you call us by name and invite us to share your good news. Send your Holy Spirit among preachers, missionaries, and evangelists. We give thanks for the witness of your servant Luke, the evangelist, whom the church commemorates this day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of praise, the heavens and all creation declare your salvation. From the rising of the sun to its setting, may the whole universe show forth your goodness. Raise up devoted stewards of all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
God of all, may your word of justice sound forth in every place, restore divided nations and communities with reconciling truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of light, we pray for those living with pain, illness, isolation, grief, anger, or doubt, especially those that we name before you now. Join their voices in a new song, assuring them that you call them each by name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of truth, you show no partiality. May your spirit guide the work of justices, magistrates, court officials, and all vocations of the law, that your promise of restoration may be known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, as you raised Jesus from the dead, so raise up those who have died in you. We give thanks for their witness, confident of your rescuing welcome for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you are life. We pray for our world, country, our community, our church, as we face the challenges of coronavirus. We pray for those who grieve the loss of loved ones, for the sick and their families, for those fearful of an unknown future. We pray for the millions of unemployed, for children and others at home, that they be safe from abuse. We pray for those who are alone and isolated during this time, that they may feel your loving presence. We pray for all the hospital and healthcare workers and all first responders, that they receive needed supplies and be kept protected in the work they do. We pray for those making decisions about how to live into the future and when that will happen. Keep us all in your care as we wait for a new day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all families, you have given us families to be sanctuaries of blessing, comfort, and love for each other. Under your protection, fill us with harmony, hope, and health. We pray this week for the Absher, Adair, and Albertson families, as well as our Messiah family. Guard all of our hearts that we may display love instead of hate, anger, or bitterness. Lead us all to be grateful for your abiding love and enable us to glorify you by sharing that love with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I hope that you take some time this week to share peace with one another through cards, emails, letters, texts, whatever works for you. Share that peace, spread it out. And I uh, hope that you continue to send your offerings into the church and uh, keep them coming. It's keeping the ministries going and uh, keep them going to MSEF, to all the other places too, uh, any individuals you know who need that help. Thank you for your continued generosity. Uh, at this time, I will mention that um, if you're watching this at home but are still thinking maybe I could come to church on Sunday as well, uh, we are having drive uh, driveway, <laughs> parking lot, worship service one more time and uh we'll be doing that um on uh 18th that's what it is and uh we were going to hope to move inside on the 18th but we're gonna have to wait one more week we had a couple last little logistical things we want to make sure we attend to those so that everybody is safe um so if you do come though we will be having communion at that parking lot service and, and uh we haven't had a chance to partake in that for a while uh, parking lot service is pretty safe. Everybody stays in their cars. Um, communion is brought to you by ushers wearing gloves. It's pre-packaged. No other hands have touched it and uh, that haven't been wearing gloves. And um, so I know it's been a while for a lot of folks. So come on over to Messiah at 1045, Sunday the 18th. Uh, if you miss it this time, we'll be moving back to it once we move inside too. Um, still the same time, 1045. Reformation Day is October 25th. And so we'll celebrate that reform by getting back in the building. Uh, Martin Luther had a thing for doors, right? We'll go through ours. It's been a while. Please join me in praying the Lord that Jesus... <laughs> Please join me in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Please receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor, give you peace. Amen. Our sending song is called For the Fruit of All Creation. Do this one more time. For the fruit of all creation, thanks be to God. For these gifts to every nation, thanks be to God. For the plowing, sowing, reaping, silent growth while we are sleeping, future needs in earth safekeeping, thanks be to God. In the just reward of labor, God's will is done. In the help we give our neighbor, God's will is done. In our worldwide task of caring for the hungry and despairing, in the harvests we are sharing, God's will is done. For the harvests of the Spirit, thanks be to God. For the good we all inherit, thanks be to God. For the wonders that astound us, for the truths that still confound us, most of all that love has found us, thanks be to God. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week. Uh, keep checking in on each other. Keep praying for one another. Um, go be spent by God in the world. Take care of that coin shortage, please. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.